Thank you for joining us. And before we get started with today's video, if you guys like what you're seeing and hearing from the Locked On Senators podcast, go ahead and hit like, smash the subscribe button so you can be the first to know about Sens content. Now, we're going to be doing a ton of these prospect profiles, so if you agree this is someone the Sens should look at or steer clear, leave your comment below so we can hear from you. Now, we got 64 of these, so let's get into it. All right, Pilsy, coming in at number 51 on our draft rankings with an average of 48.33 from the United States Development Team Program. It's Devin Kaplan. Devin Kaplan, Ross, he reminds me so much of Tyler Boucher. Like, very similar players. Because the first thing most scouts say about him is he's a physical player. He uses his size to his advantage. He's at six foot three, 198 pounds. He's a right shot, plays the right wing, plays for the U.S. national team. and From uh, with, New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, true. Also another one there. Uh, with the U18 team, he had in 53 games, 13 goals, 25 assists, good for 38 points. Then at the USHL level, in 22 games, he had 18 points. So a fairly consistent guy uh, as far as points go, but he doesn't just look at the points. Uh, like I mentioned, he's a physical guy. He's an aggressive four checker. And I kind of, um, he's got like a honey badger type attitude. You know what I mean? Where they just go into the battles and just head down and full force. That's what he does with the loose puck battles along the boards or especially in the corners. Like I, I found with the highlights I watched of him, Ross. Where he excelled is when opponents had nowhere to go. And it's like, all right, the boards are up against you and I'm on your other side. It's me versus you, mano a mano, and I am going to dominate here. And that's what Kaplan does really well. Yeah, he's great on those board battles. The yeah. one thing he needs to improve on and one thing that I think Tyler Boucher does very well is plays with pace and speed. I think that for him, something he's going to have to work on is a bit more of an explosive first step. But just like Tyler Boucher... Next year, you'll find him at Boston University. So, he, and we've got another BU guy coming up on this show, but I think that the Sens are certainly going to be interested in this player, don't you? Absolutely, Ross. Yeah, this guy just screams Sens scouting pick. And uh, I mean, I'm not going to knock them for it. Like, he's a, he's a good player. He plays a physical type game. And I think eventually the offense is is going to come a little bit uh, easier to him. Like Will Scouch, who uh, I, I use uh, for a bunch of prospects when he does his profiles on them, he said that he really thinks that Kaplan is going to hit his stride in college at BU and become more of a scoring threat. And he really says there's a huge ceiling for this guy. And I, I kind of believe it. Like anytime you get a physical guy that has a decent shot, but ha just hasn't quite figured out how to get in the right areas to score those goals. Once he does with proper development, proper coaching, all that kind of stuff, he could be a legit threat. He's a right shot, right winger who's ranked 41st on Chris Peters list, 48th on Bob McKenzie's and 56th on elite prospects. So, a little bit of a range there, but we've also got some guys who didn't rank him at all and Scott Wheeler having him as an honorable mention on his list. But certainly the potential's there and I love Will Scouch being on board with him because yeah. we know he's more analytics driven and we've got a situation where, you know, sometimes these big physical players don't look that great in the analytics community. So I'm glad that that checks out. And for me, he's a guy who I probably wouldn't be too thrilled if they take him with 39. But if they wanted to trade up with that 64th overall pick, I'm already giving the Lightning the cup. Anything better than 64, <laughs> yeah, honestly. I'll, I'll be happy with for, for an Ottawa perspective. But I do think that that pace needs to improve. And we've seen DJ Smith's teams, man. He wants them to play fast, play hard, play physical. Those last two he's got in spades here, Kaplan. But we know that you got to be fast to play in this Ottawa Senators team. We saw what happened with Goddett, right? He comes in and it's like, oh, wait, you're not fast? You're going to sit on the bench. We'll, we'll use you as our shootout guy. But yeah. uh, to me, I think Kaplan certainly has some potential to be an Ottawa Senators guy. We talked yesterday how they just love drafting out of the U.S. National Team Development Program. I wonder if the jerseys have anything to do with that. Hey, Pilsy, those are sharp. The little throwbacks like there, those. if you're watching on the Elite Prospects page. In his last 10 games, plus 11, nine points. Only two goals, though. So it's not like he's a pure goal scorer or anything like that. He's a guy who gets in the middle can facilitate to his teammates as well born january 10th 2000 bridgewater 
New Jersey. You can see the numbers here growing up. Always the best player on his team. 37 points in 20 games. You know, point per game at the U.S. program in uh, against his own peers at the under-17 team in his first game or his first year at the program. And then this year, taking off even better as well. So I'm, I'm going to be really intrigued as he's going to Boston University in the fall. What do you think for the Sens? I know we said it's going to be a fit, but how much of a fit? How many stars for you for Devin Kaplan? I'm giving him four stars, Ross. I think um, this is... This is a prototypical Sens draft selection here. And if they don't select him, Ross, I think it'll be because a team uh, snags him just before. <laughs> you, you know, one of those things. Although the Sens, they've made no secret about if they think a team's going to grab their guy, they have no hesitation in trading up and getting him or yep. reaching to to grab him as well. I, mean, I used air quotes there uh, for the listeners that weren't watching. So... I think, yeah, I, I would not be shocked at all. I, it's really going to be interesting to see what happens with that seventh overall pick. Like if they do end up keeping it, where they go there will change the next pick in my mind. So if right. they end up taking a winger at seventh overall, then they're probably not going to go for another winger uh, in the second round. And if they end up moving Zaitsev, I've kind of got that uh, Tampa second round pick as the Zaitsev sweetener. So I, I don't <laughs> anticipate that's going to be there for them. So I don't know where the Sens would select Kaplan, but I would not be surprised to hear them call out his name on draft day. 